Yes, so uh, today is a sort of um, a taster, a short version of a workshop that we're doing at the uh, Data Modeling Zone conference. But I think it uh, also serves as a standalone piece on its own. And it's, um, uh, it's a, a sort of my thoughts, it's a discussion piece around the selection of data management tools and some of the right and wrong ways of going about it. Um, won't go into much detail here, but I, I work for uh, Catapult BI. We're a, a data management professional services business and a active part of Dharma. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we work with lots of different vendors in, in order to provide services across a range of different sectors. Uh, in terms of the content for today, uh, just touch a little bit on the, the context. What is enterprise data management? Why is it important? And a little bit about some of the fundamental practices that we have to get right. And uh, one of those fundamental practices is the uh, practice of metadata management. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that. And then uh, what kind of tools do you need to support it? And how do you go about uh, finding the right metadata tools for your business? And uh, I suggest there is a, a right way, a good process, and there's I'll also highlight some wrong ways. And uh, a little bit about generalizing this to uh, other tools. So we will focus specifically around metadata, but the general principles I'm talking about today are, are generalizable to, to other data management tools. So uh, for those of you that aren't familiar, there's the, the Dharma wheel. Um, we use that as inspiration for a lot of our data management practice. Um, it's uh, uh, taken from the DMBOC. Uh, the good thing about DMBOC and the data management practices espoused in it is that it's not specific to any uh, sector. You can apply it in government, finance, telco, retailing. Uh, it's now a very widely distributed um, and, and familiar uh, body of knowledge. And uh, we, we use it pretty much every day in terms of the uh, services that we provide to people. Now, taking that Dharma wheel uh, and looking at the, uh, the different practices in data management, um, I'm of the opinion that uh, some of those practices are probably more equal than others. Now, this does require quite a bit of explanation. I'm not saying that you should only do these practices, but in most organizations that we worked with, um, you know, if you try to improved data architecture or document management. If you're trying to do an, uh, an uplift or improvement in, in one of those uh, sectors of the wheel, in one of those practice areas, often we find that uh, progress is impeded if these fundamental practices are not currently being practiced well. So uh, this, is, this is what we've observed uh, and I'll, I'll explain that in a little bit more detail. The other thing I want to uh, emphasize right at the beginning is uh, at the end of the day we're talking about data management capabilities as, as an organization we need policy we need people we need knowledge codified in places like dmbok we need process descriptions and we need some automation some software tools the software tools are just one small facet of capability an important facet but we must never forget that tools are not the only thing. <laughs> At the end of the day, we want to uplift data management capability, make the business work better by managing data, and that we have to look at all the different facets. So this idea of some of these uh, capabilities being more important than others, I use uh, an analogy from uh, rugby league, and uh, in rugby league, there is this coaching uh, philosophy of the spine of the footy team and, and essentially what it says is look you know it's a team sport you need all 13 players on the field at the same time working together however within those 13 players there are certain positions that are more critical to the success of the team and in rugby league they're the hooker halfback five eight and fullback and if the spine players are performing really really well then generally that 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 has a, a benign and beneficial effect across the rest of the players um, now of course you can't just play with four players you need all 13 on the field at the same time but it's generally seen that uh, some some positions are, are probably more critical to the success of the team than others and and this is 
sort of true in other sports so you know soccer and netball and cricket and even afl lots of other uh, uh, sporting codes are now sort of you know talking about the spine players and and this is generally agreed that some positions are a bit more critical than others and it's the same in data management we're not saying you should only focus on these four you need all facets of data management to be uplifted at the right speed and the right place uh, in an organization but in general if these spine ones are not being doing doing well then pretty much the other things are going to struggle quite a bit your your architecture your warehousing your bi your document management if your governance and your metadata and your reference master data and data quality if they're not really humming along and 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 going very well then then the other uh, aspects of data management will struggle as well now of those we think probably the data governance and metadata are probably the two most critical practice areas in data management uh, closely followed by your, your data quality and your reference and your master data metadata uh, in my opinion it's it's probably the most critical uh, practice area because it's the adhesive that binds practice and automation together so everything you do in data management whether it's governance data quality reference master data security data architecture all these practice areas either generate con or consume metadata and the metadata that is present and and generated in all these different practices is essentially the glue that holds these practices together this is this is what we believe and so we think uh, understanding and getting on top of and maturing metadata is is a vital step in uplift capability uplift in any organization so where, where does metadata live so in in many different places so um it's 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 all over the place it's in your cloud your sharepoint your file systems your document management system metadata lives all over the place in lots of different information systems and in order to manage it well and at scale you need to have software tools and uh, the commonest software tool in metadata management are things called enterprise data catalog tools uh, these tools uh, have very very powerful scanners that can basically connect to all those different uh, places in the organization where metadata resides automatically suck it out and put it into a metadata repository um, so those sorts of tools in our opinion are very very vital the tool in itself is not the be-all and end-all bear in mind it's not just tools you need to have people skilled with the right knowledge to do metadata management you need to define governance processes to govern your metadata all right it's not just the tools but these are very very powerful pieces of software and most large organizations ought to have one of these okay uh, they're, they're very very useful pieces of software and you know we'll talk a little bit about that journey if you need to have one of these things what's the right way of going about to acquire that 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 automation now um, as I mentioned earlier there's metadata lives all over the place and metadata is used in lots and lots of different practice areas of data management uh, therefore there are lots of different kinds of metadata often it's categorized into things like operational metadata uh, structural metadata um, there are different ways but in my opinion there are dozens and dozens of different kinds of metadata and this is just a, a very very simple high level overview of some of the commonest kinds of metadata now those different kinds of metadata um, require a lot of skill and capability amongst uh, skilled professionals to manage it and you know you're probably not going to do all of that metadata at the same time and you might start off with your reference data your business glossaries your data uh, security metadata your data into you might get to them uh, eventually but you know the fully finished enterprise information catalog capturing all the metadata all that glue across your organization ultimately wants to reside in in a catalog or repository now uh, where do you go to get information about 
tools, those data cataloging tools, well, Gartner, Forrester, they produce reports every year. Gartner produce a magic quadrant. Uh, and if you've done any data management, you'll be familiar with these uh, magic quadrants from Gartner. They uh, identify each year which products they think are the leaders in terms of the completeness of vision, the ability to execute. We're not going to do a detailed uh, in, investigation in, into all the vendors' products today, but uh, there is some useful information from Gartner and other researchers about the strengths and weaknesses of different tools. But here, in my opinion, is probably one of the most important uh, slides for this presentation. When you're trying to find and select metadata management tools, in my opinion, there is no one tool to rule them all, okay? There is such a, a broad range of different kinds of metadata in an organization. If you want to manage all the different kinds, the dozens and dozens of different kinds of metadata and to do it well, in my opinion, there is no one tool from a vendor that does everything brilliantly, okay? Some tools are good at some kinds of metadata, other tools are good at different kinds of metadata. And so if you want to put the right automation, the right software tooling into your metadata management practice, you're probably gonna need more than one tool, okay? Um, and, and that's just how it is. Depending on where you start, if you don't start with all metadata, but you just start with a small subset of that, you might be able to start off with one tool, but as you start to cover uh, all the different kinds of metadata in your organization, you're probably gonna need more than one, okay? And as I said, each one of these tools, and this is not a, uh, an exclusive list. This is just a, a selection of a few. Uh, each of these is going to have strengths and weaknesses. Some are going to be good at some kinds of metadata uh, and not so strong in other areas. So the, there's lots of different kinds of metadata. Managing metadata is vitally important. There's lots of different kinds of tools and each tool has strengths and weaknesses. So how do you go about selecting the right tools for your organization at this moment in time? I'm going to introduce a concept here called uh, business facing data services. What this means is that in most business areas, you're probably not going to want immediate direct access to raw metadata. Most business users want some sort of service. It might be a glossary service. It might be a data asset service. It might be a discovery service. They're going to have some need to you know, explore the data landscape. And the key thing is to understand from the business perspective, what kind of data services do they need, okay? Now, metadata is critically important to the implementation of those services, but the actual raw metadata and the, the raw metadata tools generally aren't always uh, intended for exposure to business users. And, and for most businesses, you probably don't want business users going to the raw metadata and to the raw metadata tool. You need some sort of intermediary uh, piece of software, a web interface of some kind, uh, and, and to expose the right information in the right way to those business users. That's what we call business facing data services. Now for every kind of business facing data services, it might be a search function, it might be a glossary function. Those will use various kinds of metadata. So our browse the information landscape might need some access to raw technical metadata and rich technical metadata. The, 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 the glossary service is obviously gonna need uh, access to, to business glossaries. Uh, locate standard data definition service is gonna need access to, to other kinds of metadata. So each kind of data service maps into particular kinds of metadata that enable and empower that service that business units can, can consume. And as I mentioned earlier, each vendor, there is no one tool to rule them all. Some tools will have very, very coverage in good areas. Some tools might have quite limited coverage, but be very, very good. And others might be very broad, might be a jack of all trades. So 
you know, you need to understand exactly what are the strengths and weaknesses in terms of the specific kinds of metadata in your repository in use in your organization and how that maps onto different vendors products. Okay, so where do we go to next? Well, we're now going to go through that uh, process of uh, selecting a tool. So we understand the kinds of business services that our business needs to consume. We now understand the capabilities of tools in terms of their coverages of metadata. So what do we do next? Well, the first step in selecting the right tools for our business is to understand or to know the business. So we're going to start with those business processes. We're going to start with the people who make key decisions and what kind of data service do those decision makers may need in order to make better decisions, okay? So there's the processes, there's the decision makers, what kinds of data services do they need to consume to make better decisions? And at a high level, this is the step that we go through. So as I said, understand the business process, understand where decisions, what are the pain points? Where are people lacking a data service? You know, if there was a new data service, could they make better decisions? Analyze, identify improvement opportunities, look at different selection options, and then once you know what those data services are that people need to consume, we can then look at that mapping of the data services to particular kinds of metadata. So say they need browse the information landscape, that's going to give a particular set of metadata that people need in order to empower that service. Next step is now you know what kinds of metadata need to be managed, look at that mapping of tools to specific kinds of metadata. Find a tool that has coverage and manages well those kinds of metadata that your target business service needs. Once you've done that, there's usually going to be maybe a small number of vendors that have, have fit the bill in terms of the coverage of the right kind of metadata in the right way. You then need to sort of look at other factors such as you know license costs support costs and so on once you've done that then you can come up with a deployment plan you can start to deploy your tools in a phased way you deploy them you monitor evaluate it, and make sure that first of all those tools are enabling the business services that business can consume okay so we started with the business we go on this journey and we come back and we need to ensure are those tools enabling the right business services that business needs to consume, okay? And that's, in my opinion, at a high level, what's involved in selecting a good metadata tool or suite of tools. Now, uh, there are some wrong ways, and I'll just highlight a small number of wrong ways. Um, sometimes there is the reverse journey. <laughs> so, uh, can some business stakeholder develop a plan to use the metadata tools. Why are we in this step five? Because we've gone the wrong way. Someone has gone and bought tools. Uh, they've then gone, oh, we've bought some tools. What are they good for? Uh, something to do with data management. Mm, who's responsible for data management? Uh, that person then goes and says to the business, hey, we've bought this bunch of tools. What do you think we can do with them? Okay, so this is, this is a reverse journey. And, and we've seen this uh, with some organizations where, you know, some confused person in the business has been told, do something with these tools, <laughs> okay? Um, it, it's, it's not the right way of doing it, okay? Don't rush out and spend money on tools. Go the right way around, not the wrong way around. Um, so the reverse journey is a common one. Uh, here's another one. This is essentially it's vendor or CIO group di driven, okay? And, and so what, what happens here is some vendors present to the CIO group and uh, see the CIO group or the IT shop get really excited. All these tools look really smart. This is really clever. Oh, I like that color. That functionality is great. And then they do a sort of technology evaluation. Hmm, I reckon these tools are pretty good for the business. Once, once we install them and turn them on, business will think they're wonderful. So they go off and spend money and acquire the tools. They then get installed and then hand over, here you go business, off you go. 
<laughs> we've, we've, we've bought the right things for you. You'll really enjoy it. Um, and usually the reaction in the business is, what are we supposed to do with these? <laughs> okay. So this is a sort of kind of variant of the uh, reverse journey. Uh, but this is one where, you know, there is a, a particular part of the organization that thinks it knows what is best for the business without consulting them. And so fortunately, this is a, a very common uh, uh, occurrence. And uh, yeah, uh, another wrong way is let's take the shortcut. Oh, we don't need all this business analysis. You know, as the, as the, the CTO or the CFO, I've worked in this industry a long time. I know what business needs and I know all this, this metadata stuff. It can't be that hard. Um, I'll just, I've got a bucket of money. I think I know what I'm doing. I'll go out and buy some tools. And then of course they get handed over to the business. Can someone in the business develop a plan to use these? Um, you know, uh, again, it's, it's a shortcut. Okay. Uh, and this often happens because people um, think they understand data management, they think they understand business needs, but don't in reality. And uh, they make a decision uh, on the basis of very limited information and, and don't do those hard yards in terms of understanding business needs, identifying data services, understanding different kinds of metadata. Nobody wants to do the hard yards, they're just gonna take the shortcut and get something installed and running. So that's, uh, th th there's other variants of these. This is not a, an exclusive list. There's lots of ways in which uh, tool acquisition can go wrong, but that there's some common ways. So look, um, in that presentation, I have focused on metadata management tools. And metadata management, I believe, is a very fundamental practice, and it's one that really needs to be done well uh, in, in any organization. However, that approach that I've described is, is generalizable to any other um, data management tools. You know, you need to understand the business needs. You need to do a, a metadata mapping. You need to identify tools that are candidates, understand their coverage of functionality, understand their integration capability with other tools. Uh, importantly, don't rely on a single point of organizational expertise or authority in the selection process. You don't want the CTO or, or CIO going, oh, I, I know all this stuff. This is, this is good. I, I will, I'll, I'll make an executive decision. I really like product A. Okay. No, you, 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 you've got to do those hard yards in terms of documenting need, identifying data services, doing the mapping to metadata, all, all of that stuff I've described, you, you can't take the shortcut. Uh, and remember, it's not just the tools. Okay. Um, tools are just one component of capability. You know, you could have a a superficially successful tools acquisition where you go off and you, you do this analysis. But at the end of the day, when you deploy the tools, if you don't have appropriate policies, people with the right skills, you know, organizational knowledge, well-defined processes for people to follow, if you don't have the other facets of data management capability, then the tool isn't going to help. It's just going to be a hindrance or a nuisance or it's something you'll ignore. So don't forget it's capability tool is one one component of that uh, and you know if you follow follow this general approach and you, and you take this advice and i think you know, you're more likely to uh, build capability effectively um so that's that's it for the presentation um andrew are we doing some some q a uh, any questions anybody we can put in chat or you and I'll meet you to ask the questions. But, uh, yeah. So has anybody got any questions? Yeah, sorry. 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 Okay, well, if you think of any questions, um, I'll send out the recording and the PowerPoint uh, presentation later in the day or tomorrow, and I'll include John's uh, email address so if you want to get, ask him any questions workshop or about material covered. I'm sure he'll be able to, to answer. Okay, well, thanks everybody. I'm sorry about the, uh, I can back up on my part with the links, sending out one links to presenters, but anyway, pretty good at backing up webinars. <laughs> okay, well, thanks, John. Okay. Okay, well, thanks, John. Okay.
and hopefully uh, we'll see some of you at the DMZ conference in Melbourne. Yeah. Okay, cheerio.